Okay, today we're going to take a look at um, simplifying radicals, and this will be um, the first video of three that I do just to uh, keep the videos a little bit shorter. All right, now before I like to uh, simplify radicals, I like to have a list of my perfect square roots. Um, I'm going to use these perfect square roots to help me simplify my radicals and do it as short as I possibly can. Um, so I just went all the way up to like square root of 169. That usually is going to be good enough. All right, now I also have written over here, in case we, um, you're not aware of this, square root of like x to the fourth. Anytime I have an even exponent, it's just going to be x to the second. It will always be half of that exponent. All right, and that's due to uh, laws of exponents because I could take x to the second times x to the second, and when multiplying like bases, I add the exponents, that would get me back to that x to the fourth. Okay, so square root of x to the sixth then would be x to the third, half of that exponent. Square root of x to the eighth would be x to the fourth. So even exponents on our variables are going to be very, very helpful. All right, so let's uh, simplify this first example. I've got square root of 243. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to find out which one of these perfect square roots goes into 243. So I'm going to take 243 divided by 4. I'm going to take 243 divided by 9. I'm going to take 243 divided by 16. And I want to find the largest perfect square root that will go into 243. Turns out that 81 times 3 is 243. So square root of 81 times square root of 3. And I always want to write that perfect square root first, all right, because then I can say, okay, square root of 81 is 9, and square root of 3 is simplified as far as I can, so 9 radical 3 is going to be my answer there. So my tree turned out to be relatively short. It was just two little lines. Now, I did 243 again here, uh, because I want to show you if, like you would not have gotten that it was 81 times 3, you would not have chosen the biggest perfect square root over there. Okay, maybe as soon as you start doing it, you went 243 divided by 4. Well, that doesn't go into it. 243 divided by 9, it does divide out evenly. 9 times 27 is 243. So if you would have chosen that one, you can still do the problem. It's just a little longer process. All right, so if you would have stopped right as soon as you found that 9 goes into it, all right, that's going to work because the square root of 9 is 3, so that right there is going to give us a 3. But then what you have right here is the square root of 27, which is not simplified as far as it can be. So now what you have to do is you just have to go back to the list, find another uh, perfect square that goes into 27. turns out to be 9 again, because 9 times 3 is 27, and square root of 9 is a perfect square. This 3 would then just carry on down. Square root of 9 there is a 3. That radical 3 is as simplified as it can get. 3 times 3 is going to give me a 9 square root of 3. All right, so there's nothing wrong with doing a problem like that. It just takes a lot, lot more steps and a lot longer to do. So your goal would be to find the biggest perfect square root that goes into the radical that you are trying to simplify. All right, now what I did this one, I threw this one in just because it had some letters in there. Um, usually I just like to break those up. Let's separate and give myself a little bit more room. Um, I like to just work with the numbers and then work with the letters. So I break that up into the square root of 28 and square root of x to the 7th. And I deal with this just like I have the first two examples, and then I can deal with the letters separately. All right, so square root of 28, I'm going to look over here on my list. I'm going to find the biggest perfect square root that will go into it. I'm pretty sure it's 4 because 4 times 7 is 28. So square root of 4 times square root of 7. All right, square root of 4 is a 2, and square root of 7 then is simplified as far as I can go. All right, so I've taken care of the coefficient there. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to deal with this x to the 7th. Well, I know that I need even exponents to be able to have perfect squares. All right, using my laws of exponents, I can break that x to the 7th up into x to the 6th times x to the 1st. Okay, so, and I want to do that. It's always going to be the biggest even number right before that odd number right there. So x to the sixth square root times square root of x, and then it would be to the first there. Because when I multiply like bases, I add those exponents, I get back up there to the x to the seventh. All right, choosing this being the biggest even number right before that odd number, that gives me a perfect square. So this is going to simplify to x to the third 
and that square root of x is as small as it can go. All right, so now everything that I have taken the square root of, everything that I pulled out, I'm going to multiply together. So 2x to the third, 2x to the third. Now everything under the radicals I'm going to multiply. 7 times x is just 7x, so square root of 7x. All right, so the square root of 28x to the seventh simplifies down to 2x to the third times the square root of x, 7x. All right, so three short examples there, um, just on the beginnings on how you simplify radicals. Um, if you like the video, uh, go ahead and uh, give me a like on this and share with your friends so that they can um, help to understand radicals too. Thanks. Um, we're going to do some more with simplifying radicals. Uh, this is video uh, number two of three that I am doing. Um, all of these examples are going to be dealing with uh, multiplication. So you're going to see uh, problems that have some multiplication with the radicals, and it'll probably just say simplify. All right, um, here again, before I have started this, I do have my list of perfect square roots, which is going to come in handy once I start to break it up into a little factor tree to simplify my radical, and then just reviewing that um, even exponents, the square root of like x to the fourth is going to be an x to the second. Just reviewing that from uh, the first video, part one, that I did. All right, um, so let's say start out here. Um, first thing you're going to want to do, um, you can multiply what's underneath radicals. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. This says square root of 8 times the square root of 12. So I'm actually going to go 12 times that 8 right there, and I'm going to get 96. So then I've got the square root of 96. Once I get to that part, I'm going to simplify it just like I did in part one. Um, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to try to find the biggest perfect square root that goes into 96. All right, turns out that 16 goes into 96 six times. So then I'm going to break this up into the square root of 16 times the square root of 6. Okay, by choosing this being the biggest perfect square, then I'm only going to have two rows here, square root of 16 gives me a 4. Radical 6 is as simplified as it can go. So then I've got 4 square root of 6. All right, so uh, simplified answer there, 4 square root of 6. Okay, now I've got another example here showing some multiplication. These times, there, uh, this time there's some coefficients out here outside that radical, and then you've got stuff underneath radical. When you multiply, you may multiply the coefficients together. You may also multiply what's underneath the radicals. So that 3 times 4 is going to give me a 12. And then 2x times 10x is going to give me a 20x squared underneath my radical. Okay, so now I'm going to simplify this. That 12 has already been simplified. I mean, it's the coefficient out in front of the radical, so I don't need to worry about it. That 12 is basically just going to come down in every line that I do. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put that 12 down there. Now, like I did in part one in the first video that I showed, I broke up the coefficient and the variables, so I'm going to do that here. I'm going to break this up into square root of 20 times square root of x squared. That way I can deal with them separately. The 12, like I said, is done. He's just going to come straight down. All right, now this radical 20, I want to come up with the biggest perfect square from this list that will go into 20. Turns out that it is the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. 4 times 5 is 20. Okay, and then let's go ahead and finish this before I start over there. The 12 is going to come straight down. The square root of 4 is 2, which is what I wanted. That square root of 5 there is as simplified as it can get. All right, now let's come over here and work with this uh, square root of x squared. All right, well, it's an even exponent, and when it's an even exponent, I can just take half of the exponent. So square root of x squared is just going to give me a plain little x, and then he would just come all the way down. All right, so you go through. You find everything that you have taken out that is outside your square roots. 12 times 2 times x is going to give me a 24x. And square root of 5, then, there's only one thing underneath the radical, so I can just set it up there against that. So, final answer, 24x, square root of 5. All right, so just two quick little examples showing how you can um, multiply radicals and then go into the simplifying of them. Uh, if you like the video, that'd be great. Give me a like, and you can also share with your friends. Thanks.
This is my uh, last video of three on simplifying radicals. Um, each one of these examples are going to be dealing with quotients. Um, and again here I have my list of perfect square roots that will come in handy when we go to simplify even farther and then a reminder of when we have even exponents on our variables then we can just take half of that exponent and that will be make it a perfect square. All right, um, so a lot of different things that you can do when you have quotients inside here. First of all, I'm going to take a look at what's underneath there. I have square root um, 11 over 49, one great big radical. All right, now, if one or both of these are like perfect squares, then I'm going to want to break this great big radical up into two small ones. And as I can look, 49, square root of 49 is 7, so it is on there. So I, that's what I'm going to want to do. I'm going to want to make it a little square root over the top and a little square root over the bottom. Okay, that is a legal uh, move that we can do with uh, radicals. All right, square root of um, 11, I can't simplify, but that square root of 49, I can simplify. So this would become square root of 11 over 7, and then I'm done. I don't have to do any more with that. Okay, again, uh, taking a look at this second example, I'm going to take a look at that quotient inside that radical, and I'm going to see if what I can do with it. All right, square root of 25 is a perfect square, and because this is x to the fourth, that's an even exponent, then it definitely is also a perfect square root. So I'm going to take the one great big radical, and I'm going to break it up into two small ones. So I can take the square root of 25 on the top, I can take the square root of x to the fourth on the bottom. Square root 25 gives me a 5, square root of x to the fourth gives me an x squared. So again, relatively straightforward there. Okay, um, now over here on this one, let's say I want to go to this example over here. Let's say we're taking the square root of 88 over 11. All right, well, square root of 88 is not a perfect square, so on our list, square root of 11 is not. All right, however, if I continue to take a look at what is going on with these two numbers in here, I can take 88, divide by 11, and that turns out to be 8. So if I can divide them, I can do that. So 88 divided by 11 is 8. That's going to simplify this down into the square root of 8. Now, I cannot just assume that I'm done at that point. I do have to make sure and see if I can simplify. I can. 4 goes into 8. 4 times 2 is 8. So then I can go back to the factor tree that I had in the first two videos. I can break this up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 2 is 2. So 2 square root of 2. All right, now, sometimes it'll work out like that, sometimes it won't. Coming over here to this last quotient right here, all right, well, I can't go 12 divided by 27 like I did over here. That didn't work. All right, however, if I just examine 12 over 27 and, and pretend like it's a fraction, I could reduce that fraction to those terms. And then, recalling laws of exponents from a few chapters ago, x to the third over an x, all right, I can do laws of exponents. I can subtract those exponents and get an x to the second. So that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to take 12 over 27, and I'm going to reduce it to those terms. I'm going to divide the top by 3. I'm going to divide the bottom by 3. That's going to give me a 4 and a 9. So 12 27 reduces to 4 9 Now I'm going to deal with those uh, variables. x to the third divided by an x to the first. The um, rule says when dividing like bases, we subtract the exponents. There's a little imaginary one right there. That would give me an x to the second in the top. All right, now, the radical is still there because all I did was just manipulate underneath that radical. All right, so I've reduced the lowest terms. Now, what that has gotten me, now I have 4 and 9. Both of those are perfect squares. I have an x to the second. Again, another perfect square. So now I'm going to break it up into two little radicals. Radical on top, 4x squared, and radical 9 on the bottom. Both being perfect squares. I can do the top as 3x Oops, sorry. I can do the top as 2x and the bottom as 3. All right, so uh, three, four little examples there of showing how you can deal with your quotients. Hopefully, maybe they'll divide out evenly. If not, you can maybe reduce them down to lowest terms and they might become perfect squares for you. Or they, you can immediately break them up because you were given perfect squares underneath that radical to start with. All right, so four examples, last video there of simplifying radicals.